Hey, Mike Callahan here. Well, first of all, I want to thank Amar and the whole ZenMade staff for allowing me to speak today about automations and what they can do for your business. I'm going to go in in the beginning of this. Uh, if you haven't heard who I am or heard the background story, I want to kind of give you the background of automations, why they are so near and dear to my heart and how they've absolutely changed my life, my business, and my family uh, work-life um, balance. As we kind of dive into this, we're going to go into what a fully automated cleaning company can look like and how um, it's going to approach the different stages of a business for scaling and growth to that million mark and well beyond. So we're going to be looking at the, the sales process, the employee recruiting, training, and onboarding process and repetitive tasks. Uh, we're going to be going over the four to five main parts of a business that can be automated. Um, so as we dive into this, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, raise your hand at the end of this and we'll get to them, whether um, it's now in the live version or uh, if you submit some questions, I'm happy to uh, reach back out to you via email as well. So as we're diving into this, a um, little background on myself, uh, 24 years, actually going on 25 now in the service industry, uh, spent well over 3,500, probably 4,000 hours creating automated systems in my business. Uh, with no intentions of really sharing them, but it was such a um, life-changing event that I thought it was really uh, ethically the right thing to do to get out and help other business owners uh, be able to take their life back from the business through the, the use of automations. I uh, invested well over $150,000 in building automations for my own company, uh, traveling across the whole United States and parts of Canada. We went out and sought out the experts in each part of automation. So whether it was text messaging or SMS, whether it was chatbots, whether it was um, short-term nurture or long-term nurture, different funnels. Uh, so we went in, uh, a lot of this was all self-taught and then the remainder of it was going in and going to different experts across the US and Canada to actually dial in a system um, that was fine-tuned for uh, amazing results. Uh, also the author of Callahan's Corner in Lawn and Landscape Magazine, and the founder of a uh, company basically that does automations and business consulting around the service industry called Simple Growth. But uh, what this is really about here is to show you how you can use automations in your business and start to buy that time back. So before we dive into automations, um, if you're not familiar what automations are, it's basically it's a system that allows you to leverage technology to fill manual or repetitive tasks. So the thing we're doing is looking at uh, a business and all the things that are focused around you as the business owner. We want to create predictable process and systems that now are automated so all the things that should happen happen without you, the business owner or manager, being involved. So that's the key of building automations. Uh, perks of automations. Uh, it's basically it's a system of internal processes that work for you. They allow you to replicate yourself through technology. So whether it's through a task or to do, um, with basically instructions of what the individual needs to do in a deadline or how to basically replicate yourself with the use of uh, certain technology and video and automation as well. So we're going to go through all that. And basically, it's just going to ensure what should happen always happens without you, the business owner. So in building out your own automations, there's really four parts to success. Um, without these uh, four parts of success, building automations can be a very dangerous thing. So the first thing is we really need a successful business model. Um, so before we automate, we need to make sure we have the foundational parts of this business built out. So the business model has to be on point and correct. The strategy of the business has to be um, working and the systems and processes. With these three parts of a business all put together, the equal of successful implementation of automations. Um, so before we go to automate a business, we really need to have a truthful and internal look of the business and make sure the model, the strategy, and systems and processes in the business are intact, they're working correctly, and they're netting the predictable results that you want. Uh, if we go in and we have the proper business model and system processes, but the strategy of the business is failing or not accurate the way it should be, for success, uh, if we go in and replicate that strategy or any of the systems or processes behind it, uh, we could be causing a 10x problem now because we're multiplying something that in the business that should be uh, working correctly, but we're automating a broken process. Now, automations will amplify that problem immediately. So we want to make sure we're looking at our business, make sure our model, our strategy, and systems and processes are correct before we go in and implement an automated system. 
Uh, one of the biggest misconceptions in the service industry for sure is once we build an automated system in a business that no one has to do the work. Uh, most people think that Rosie the robot or our, our current day version of the Roomba is gonna go around and basically take care of all the manual and some of the repetitive tasks, whether it be residential cleaning or, or commercial cleaning. Uh, the automations are just gonna make sure what should happen happens without the business manager owner. So whether it's in the office or in the field or a combination of both, uh, automations are gonna buy that time back, create predictable systems and processes um, that buys time back from the owner as well as some of the staff, but someone still has to do some of the physical work. So uh, as you're building this, we're not replacing humans with automated kiosks or things like that. Uh, we're just gonna create a standardized automated system that will help with the work in the field and in the office and create predictability and start buying time back from some of the manual tasks. Uh, the core areas of business we can automate is what we found when we jumped into my business is there's really five of them. Uh, the key ones are marketing, sales, fulfillment, finance, and internal. I like to call slash HR because internal is going to include your human resources. The main areas that we're going to be tackling on the biggest ROI return on investment in your business are going to be sales automations and internal HR. Uh, the rest of these definitely can be done. And we'll dive in and, and on a high level to show you where they can plug in. But for this talk right now, uh, if you're going in, you don't want to eat the whole elephant. You want to bite off little pieces. You want to go in and, in my opinion, track on sales and internal HR. So the main scaling parts of the business, the, the growth hurdles that we'll find are getting enough leads and creating a sales process to scale. And then once we have so many um, sales, we need to create a team to fulfill that work. So once we go in, we need to go out and build an employee recruiting, training, and onboarding system. And then the final stage of that to break that million dollar mark and beyond, depending where you're at, is once we have all these employees, the business owner manager becomes a glorified firefighter. We are babysitting, we're putting fires out here, we're putting fires out there, uh, and we're, we're trying to uh, go after the, the Michael Gerber approach of working on the business and not in it, we need to pull ourselves back out. So that's where repetitive tasks uh, will come into play. So I'm going to break out our sales process, our employee process, and then our internal HR for repetitive tasks and accountability without the business owner uh, going out and having to show people what to do. So what I found is once we got to that point in our business, if I wasn't there on a daily or weekly basis to tell people what to do, how to do it, when to do it, it never happened. So I'm going to show you that trans, um, the transgression of, of where we're at in the business and how we use automation to meet pain point of growth of scale to pull the business owner back out to buy that time back. So the sales process, the first thing we want to look at is going in and segmenting. So the sales cycle, life cycle marketing. So in a traditional sales cycle, you're looking at, uh, we have a prospect, we have a lead requesting um, an estimate or a prospect requesting it, a lead that's received an estimate, hopefully they turn to a customer, or they are uh, conversely a loss estimate. And then um, we're looking to potentially get a current customer renew. Now, obviously, in residential cleaning, that may not be uh, as much of an issue because they're running forever till they cancel. But if you're in commercial cleaning, uh, we may need to get them to renew at the end of a bid or contractual term. So we'll kind of review that. And then next thing is, uh, in the end of that is, if we have a customer, no, no matter how good our service is, eventually that consumer is going to cancel our services. So we need to be able to segment each one of those parts in the customer life cycle and be able to automate the entire process uh, to go in and get the most out of our CRM, our customer relationship management software that we're using. Um, but as we're looking at that, I really want to challenge you to look a little bit deeper um, in the segmentation of the position in the life cycle. Well, just to say that they're a prospect and they're a lead and they've received an estimate or a loss estimate and they're a current cancel commercially that needs to renew or they're a canceled, uh, let's say weekly or bi-weekly cleaning customer, where I'm gonna challenge you is to go in and segment them per service. So uh, let's just say we have a top to bottom or a deep cleaning prospect. So what we really wanna go in is dial it into the specific service they're interested in so we can have an automated but personal conversation. So imagine somebody hits our website or calls our office. We we have a, a person that's looking right now, so it's a prospect for a, a top to bottom clean. 
now we have a top to bottom lead requesting an estimate. We have a top to bottom lead that's received an estimate that needs to be followed up on closed on, whether it's over the phone or through a nurturing automated process we're gonna show you. And then we potentially have a top to bottom uh, customer or a top to bottom loss estimate. And now we have a, a current customer that needs to renew for top to bottom. Well, obviously a top to bottom is a one-time clean, but we could have a current customer that needs to be renewed um, as a top to bottom that needs to be re re basically upsold to a one-time uh, service to reoccurring. So we've got our weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly clean, depending how we set that up in our cleaning company. And then eventually we have a canceled top to bottom. So maybe they didn't go for the one-time upsell to a reoccurring service, so they're actually um, potentially a canceled uh, customer at that point under top to bottom. So by positioning uh, each specific service that we do in this fashion, we're able to have an automated personal conversation based around their particular interactions with our business and their service needs. In addition, as we go through and segment them, we want to go in to be able to educate them to the specific service they're interested in. So it's personal education. And inside this education, we're going to overcome any price or sales objections and create a higher perceived value to the service. We're going to potentially submit an estimate. And then we want to sell on a personal level with our potentially our automated and somewhat personal follow up through um, different things such as tasks and to do's we'll get into. So as we're looking at this, we really want to go in and be able to um, use the analogy here of imaginary buckets. So whether we have a weekly clean, a biweekly clean, a monthly, a top to bottom clean, or uh, maybe a move in or move out or post construction, we'll be able to talk to those uh, potential leads or clients on the actual service level that they're interested in or actually um, using in our business. So first question I have is, are you throwing money out the, out the window, basically in the trash? So as we dive into this here, these red buckets, these trash cans here that you see uh, are potential holes in your um, sales pipeline. So as you go to the, the left-hand column of the screen here, we have um, all your different lead sources. You get your Facebook, your AdWords, your nine arounds, banner ads, maybe EDDM. Um, obviously, there's just a selection of many different advertising sources that we could be using. Um, but as we're potentially looking at this and they're coming in, they're hitting our website, um, do we have a way right now to capture at least their first name and email address? So if they've hit this website and they're not quite ready to convert and request an estimate for whether it's a weekly or top to bottom clean or even by, uh, a biweekly clean, uh, we need something in place right now to capture the first name and email address so we can go in and basically segment them as someone who is interested in our service but not ready to commit to an estimate, and we can retarget them with long-term education. In addition, we're able to take that Facebook pixel, hopefully on the header of your website, um, and retarget them or take that email and upload it into a custom audience and platforms like Facebook to retarget them with some more nurture. So the first thing we're looking at is we're going to create a lead magnet. Now, once we drive them through, they've requested an estimate here uh, for, let's just say, a top to bottom clean. We want to run them through some short-term education to educate them how to do the service themselves as a professional. Once the estimate's submitted, we're going to have an automated estimate follow-up. So we're going to, the process we use is 20 days to close. We found 20 days was the optimal um, time span to go up and follow out on each and every estimate. I'll get into details of that in the next few slides. Taking the bottom progression here, if we lose the estimate and we have no way of segmenting that loss estimate per service in each imaginary bucket, that is another potential in our sales funnel. So we need to be able to plug that up. And in this talk, I'm gonna show you how to tackle that basically potential hole in your sales funnel. Once we go to the top progression here, uh, we've made the sale. So let's go across the top progression where we've got a one-time sale. So this is that top to bottom clean. If we don't have an automated process or a process in place to upsell a reoccurring service, whether it's your weekly, your biweekly, or your monthly clean, that is another potential hole in your sales pipeline. So it's another area we're going to plug and inject money back into your sales system. If we take the bottom progression after the sales made and we've got a reoccurring sale or a gateway service um, for like a weekly or bi-weekly clean, 
we want to have the ability to upsell a additional service on top of that reoccurring service. So uh, as we get in here, after the reoccurring service, we're gonna upsell an additional service. So that could be your stove cleaning, your fridge cleaning. Uh, that could be a seasonal deep clean around the holidays, up and above your, your maintenance clean. Uh, whatever that looks like in your business, that's another potential uh, hole in your pipeline. So we wanna drive them in. If it's a one-time sell, we wanna have an upsell to reoccurring service. If we're going in and getting that reoccurring service right off the bat, so we probably have our top to bottom, and then our weekly or biweekly clean, uh, we're going to upsell an additional reoccurring service for uh, probably a one-time holiday deep clean or spring and fall deep clean, whatever that looks like in your business. In addition, we'll have some upsells for a fridge clean out or a stove clean out if that's something applicable to your cleaning business. If you're in the commercial space, uh, maybe it's a wax and strip, things like that. We want to be able to take our reoccurring service and then upsell upon that to build a higher client lifetime value of revenue. So as we're going and we're cross-selling, upgrading and doing seasonal upsells, um, we've kind of touched on that already, but we can have some more seasonal specials as well. Uh, maybe a gift card offer right around the seasons and a promotion there. So that's another potential area that we have a hole in our sales pipeline. So we wanna be able to look at that as well. Um, is potentially even in there is maybe a refer a friend. So maybe we're doing a NPS and net promoter score um, automation to either social review or social review and refer a friend to get them to refer their friends and family members as well. And then the last thing is we have a lost estimate or canceled service. We want to have some kind of reactivation process. Otherwise, we've got another potential hole in our sales pipeline. So going into customer lifecycle marketing, uh, there are several areas that we want to attack. Um, I'm going to propose there's probably five or six potential holes in your pipeline right now. So literally from website um, acquisition, is there a lead magnet? Someone to, some way to capture their name and email to give away, um, an ex to give away basically something of value in exchange for that name and email. Uh, once we lose an estimate, if we segment the estimates and have a way to reactivate them every three to six months. Uh, if we have a one-time sell, do we have a process to upsell from that one-time deep clean or top to bottom to a recurring weekly bi-weekly or monthly. After the reoccurring sale is hopefully made, do we have a way to upsell uh, additional top to bottom cleans or deep cleans on a seasonal area? And then do we have a way to cross sell or have certain seasonal promotions based on maybe a gift card offer or something else that you do in your business? And then finally, loss estimates and canceled services. Are we dropping them in their own imaginary bucket so we can segment them and have personalized automated conversations every three to six months to reactivate them along with our long-term nurture that's gonna build more value. So these are the areas that we need to tackle in, my, in the business, in my opinion. Um, and as we do that, I'm gonna dive in to show you how to plug these holes in your sales pipeline and how to build an automated system. So the first thing we're looking at is that lead magnet. When somebody hits that website, do we have something to capture them? Some ideas of a lead mag magnet are a video series, a white paper, or a how-to guide with pictures. Um, I'm a really big proponent of video if you can do it because it seems to be engaged um, 60 to 70% more than long copy text. But whatever your comfort level is, um, I suggest getting something on there. Uh, this is an example right off my website. Uh, register here, the six reasons to hire a professional free video series. So it was an automated series. We've sent out a series of six videos that overcome any of the objections of a service business. If they don't answer the phone, they're not show up on time, um, you name it, we know those perceptions of service businesses. We addressed them up front and overcame them and created a higher perceived value to our services. Um, so the idea would be if they hit the website and they weren't ready to commit to uh, requesting an estimate, at least we get their first name and email to go out and build a marketing list for long-term nurture, as well as retarget them through Facebook ads and other online media. So this is basically what we dialed out here is a sales uh, pipeline that's automated. I'm gonna take you through the whole entire process from stem to stern. So literally from lead acquisition all the way through reactivation. And this is how we broke it down piece by piece to automate a whole entire process that was once manual, now completely automated. 
So the first thing we did is we built out an estimate request that we obviously embedded in our website. That estimate request went in and segmented each imaginary bucket. So whether in a cleaning business, it would be a top to bottom, a weekly, bi-weekly, or a monthly clean, whatever they were interested in. So now the whether they called the office or they hit our office entry form where uh, the guys and girls in the office would enter that in. We captured the information that we needed right off the bat. So whether it was a square footage of home that you guys need, uh, small, medium, and large bedrooms, or combination, or maybe number of bathrooms, whatever that number of data points that are needed, we'd capture that live off the website or through basically a standardized lead intake form. Now they're entered into the CRM, our customer management software system. The system now automatically emails out a lead letter. And a lead letter are the five or six reasons why your business is different. So we emailed out automatically, they're in the CRM, and in addition, uh, we tied into a product called Send Gym, and then automatically mailed out this lead letter to the clients as well. So not only we had electronic media, but we had a physical something thing and they could, they could hold in their hand for that emotional connection. Um, and for some reason, I'm not exactly sure why, but that emotional connection of having that physical piece of paper in their hand um, either helped close more sales or reaffirmed after they bought to overcome that buyer's remorse. So the next step is before the estimate or in conjunction with the estimate, if we're trying to close them live over the phone, we would automatically trigger out a thing that we call short-term education. Now, short-term education is basically segmented based on the specific service they're interested in. So if it was a top to bottom clean versus a weekly or bi-weekly clean that was more particular maintenance, the automation here in a cleaning instance is going to educate them to the particulars of what is going to happen in that top to bottom clean. So in a top to bottom clean, is it are the maybe the shades going to be done with a microfiber or is it going to be with a duster? Obviously, there's different ways we're going to attack oh, a top to bottom clean versus a weekly maintenance clean. So we want to differentiate um, each type of service, what's included, what's not included, and how a professional does it. By doing so, we're creating a higher perceived value of that specific service. And if we do it right, we go in and overcome any sales or price objections. So the commonly asked questions, uh, one of the big ones is, do I need to be home to have the cleaning done? Uh, is there certain types of insurance that you're going to have? What happens if um, there's inclement weather and you can't make it that day that you're scheduled? What happens if I come home and I'm not happy with the cleaning? Maybe uh, we've got to the master bathroom and everything else in the house is perfect, but we forgot to wipe down the tiles. How do you guys handle that? So these are the things that are addressed in a purely educational way to overcome those sales and price objections, uh, to shorten that sales cycle, and to educate them how it's done as a professional to create that higher perceived value to justify your higher prices. Next step along here is we're going in and submitting the estimate. So whether we're closing them over the phone, I would highly recommend sending out a physical estimate via email. This, this estimate now that it's submitted, uh, is going to be entered into an automated estimate follow-up. We call this process 20 days to close. It's going to hit on separate um, mediums. So we're going to go and have automated emails and automated text messages. These will automatically follow up on the estimate. Um, and we're going to alternate them. In addition, we're going to go out and actually have physical phone calls. Physical phone calls come up depending on the CRM, uh, either as a task or a to-do. And the way we've built these out, uh, in our businesses, we had uh, the built out with a specific call script. So in a cleaning instance, we're like, hey, call Mrs. Smith. It's been three days since we dropped off her top to bottom estimate. This is what to say. If she says the price is too high, there's some call script how to overcome that sales objection. But the most important part of it is in the bottom, it said, if Mrs. Smith becomes a customer, do this in the CRM. If Mrs. Smith doesn't become a customer, do this in the CRM. If Mrs. Smith says, I'm unsure if I'm gonna hire you or not, I need some more time, do this in the CRM. So you've created a predictable workflow that's not revolving around the business owner or manager, that's predictable and trackable with deadlines. The next evolution of this was basically as the business scaled to such a level that we weren't physically able to make all the personal phone calls on the phone. We also tied into that product, Send Gym, and there's many other ones out there as well uh, that do this. I'm just showing you the one we've used particularly, uh, but we created 
a automation that tied into that platform and sent out a thing called a ringless voicemail bomb. And what that did is if we had a cell phone on file, it would automatically hit the cell phone, look like a missed call, and leave a voicemail. And it wasn't a robocall. It was a personalized but automated message from myself. And it would be like, hey, it's Mike. Um, from Callahan, sorry, missed you. Just wanted to leave you a voicemail. Looks like our team dropped off an estimate three days ago. Wanted to call to see if you had any questions regarding your estimate. If you do, feel free to call us back at the office. Otherwise, feel free to accept our, your online estimate. So if you don't have the bandwidth or the desire to talk to people on the phone, we can still automate a live phone call that's automated. Hopefully at this point, we've won the estimate. Um, so we're going to go in here to the one estimate process. What we do in this process here is we go in and send it an automated welcome letter. So this should acclimate them what to expect when dealing with your, cost, your, your company and should merge in any payment portal or different credit card forms that you have to get that credit card on file if that's something you require to do your billing right after um, your cleaning. And that's something that we shifted to in our business. We required all customers to have a credit card on file, help with cash flow and predictability there. Next thing is we drove down to a 30, 60, and 90 day follow up for all reoccurring services. So whether uh, in the cleaning industry, we've got a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly cleaning, we're going to have a 30, 60, and 90 day follow up um, that's automated through email or text just as a quick personal touch base. Hey, Mrs. Smith, it's been about 30 days since we started cleaning your home. Just want to touch base to make sure you're doing okay. So traditionally what you would find in a cleaning instance is um, similar to the master tile um, example of the master bathroom, uh, we'd probably get a personal email back. Hey, the guys and girls are doing a great job uh, cleaning the home, but occasionally you're not wiping down the tile in the master bath. So this is going to allow you to address any of the customer service concerns before they become cancellation issues. In addition, we've created the automation in this process to be even more personal. So if it wasn't a reoccurring maintenance situation for a weekly or biweekly clean, and it let's just say it was a one-time top to bottom, the automation was smart enough to realize it was only a one-time clean, and we can go out and follow up the same fashion, but only once. So this is improving that retention and hopefully uh, avoiding that 90-day churn or cancellation period that is the most dangerous. Next thing we did is we drove through a happy holidays, all the major US holidays, New Year's Eve, Labor Day, Memorial Day, Veterans Day. Uh, the automation educated them to what to expect um, or edu educated them about the actual holiday itself and then we wished them a happy holiday. Um, just a great little nurture there that uh, people really loved. Um, and we, we went through and sometimes on certain holidays where we gave free services away on Veterans Day or certain, um, charities that we sponsored on 4th of July, we had personal little interactions of uh, myself or company members doing these things or video snippets. Um, and it built that personal relationship and reinforced our uh, basically engagement in the community. Next thing we drew through is newsletters. Now we tackled these a little bit different as we evolved. Uh, originally we started out with our traditional 12 month newsletter in the beginning of the month. And what that did is educated them or gave them monthly tips, how to basically do certain things around their home or in their landscape um, that was educational, no sales pitch there, um, and just basically showing them how to do it. But if it was time to potentially do your stove cleaning, your oven cleaning uh, before the holidays, that newsletter could contain information how to do that as a professional and a soft one liner at the bottom. Hey, by the way, if you need some help with those additional cleaning aspects or services before the holidays, we're here to help. So it's a very educational and soft upsell. In addition, what we also did is we segmented our leads and clients, almost as separate pipelines, and it allowed us to send separate promotions and communications to our clients and leads mid-month around the 15th or 20th. So we could have personal conversations with our leads and our clients separately based on where they're at in the life cycle marketing. The final thing is um, when we were done with that, we had to look at it and say, hey, well, if they're not a customer, Obviously, we've lost that estimate or they've canceled our services. So as we did that, we developed this next process. So obviously, if we didn't win the estimate, we've lost the estimate. So 
uh, the first thing we did is we tackled loss estimates. So right from lead acquisition off the website, we've already segmented each service in its own imaginary bucket. Well, that's allowed us now to circle back um, in the cleaning industry for every three to 12 months or so, depending on your timing is what we recommend is about six months. Uh, we're educating them and providing value uh, with the newsletters and the mid-month uh, communication based on where they're at, whether a customer or not a customer. In this instance, they're not. So hopefully we're nurturing them enough and creating enough perceived value that we can reach out every six months here and say, hey, Mrs. Smith, we're sorry for whatever reason. We lost your weekly cleaning estimate. How's the current cleaner doing? And we'd love the opportunity to make it up to you and get you a new quote. So in my company two years ago, uh, one spring we had 164 estimates generated off this particular process. And since we educated them and built a better relationship with them through that long-term nurture mid-month, we we're able to close those 164 estimate requests um, at about 64%. But these had estimates already been lost. So these are lead acquisitions that we already paid for. After we went through and worked the math, uh, our client acquisition cost before this process was about $78 to get a new client. This acquisition process through the long-term uh, nurture and loss estimate activation drove our client acquisition cost down between $56 and $58 per lead source. So what we realized is we had one of those trash cans. We were literally losing money um, because every time we lost an estimate, we theoretically crumpled it up and threw it out the window or in the trash. But now by creating this segmented bucket, we can go in and reactivate that lead each and every time and create a compiled database that's segmented that we can have an automated but personal conversation. So really highly recommend from lead acquisition all the way through reactivation that we have each imaginary bucket per service and we can reactivate your loss estimates for whether it's a weekly, bi-weekly or top to bottom clean. Next thing is we went through and, and segmented all our canceled clients. So whether it was a weekly cleaning, a bi-weekly cleaning, or a top to bottom cleaning in the cleaning industry, that's how we would tackle that. Uh, but it allowed us to go back out in the automation and go out every 12 months and apologize to the specific service they canceled. So in this example, let's just say it's a weekly cleaning. We could go out and say, Mrs. Smith, we're so sorry you canceled your weekly cleaning. We'd love the opportunity to make it up to you and get you a new quote. So what we're finding across the cleaning industry is about two to two and a half percent of all canceled clients are reactivating. And the reason being is, um, from at least my research and, and feeling on it is about 80% of all clients that cancel are indifferent. It means they're not really happy. They're not really aggravated. They're just okay. We're not going out and wowing them. So if we can go back out and capture a percentage of those 80% of the people that weren't really mad, weren't really happy, those are easy sales. So um, also another huge hole in the sales pipeline that we had. So we went out and nurtured all our canceled clients and then reactivated them uh, every 12 months. Next thing here is a renewal or reminder. So this would fall more in your commercial cleaning, um, going out and actually getting a renewal for your commercial cleaning contracts. Or if it is a one-time top to bottom or deep clean, the way we built the automation here for a one-time service to upselling to reoccurring is about a week after the one-time um, uh, deep clean or top to bottom clean happens, we'd go out and either upsell weekly or bi-weekly cleaning to continue to upsell and raise that client lifetime value. So this is kind of how we tackled um, the sales portion of the automations here. And a little background on how we did this, and you may wonder, oh, how does this work? Um, obviously, we didn't want to teach our staff automation, so we wanted to create a standardized form that we called the master sales form. Uh, this is basically a manual override, depending on the CRM you're using, or depending on um, the CRM, this may be a needed function. But I wanted to give you some idea of what this actually looks like for training your staff. Uh, the master sales form, depending on the CRM, would be LinkedIn. Um, and map to first name, last name, email, all the, the top things you would automatically be filled in when it's pulled up. Uh, we'd have a manual override to stop the calls. They did not buy, they bought, or were communicating. So this would allow us in that 20 days to close to manually override uh, the automation for the automated estimate follow-up if we wanted to stop it for some reason. Otherwise, once the estimate was submitted, it would automatically trigger. And once the estimate was won or lost, it would automatically stop. We built some granularity in this. We control it from the outside. And then we would have all our services. So on the, on the right-hand side of the screen here, we'd have our top to bottom, our weekly, bi-weekly, monthly clean. Now, depending on the CRM and how you set this up, this could automatically happen. 
but the worst case scenario would be the admin in the office would go in and literally hit hire renewed, lost estimate canceled on the particular service that was lost, won or canceled, and that would put them in that imaginary bucket. And by doing that one manual task um, on this populated form, it would do the next 10 to 12 steps and take care of all the timing and all the communication along the line. So the idea here is to basically anchor your business with one or two reoccurring services. So uh, that's going to be probably your weekly or biweekly clean. Um, we're going to use digital marketing to basically cast a digital net. Um, this is so this is going to be your Facebook, your LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, and we're going to start posting organic educational content to drive those leads into that automated pipeline. Now, once we go out and make those sales through that digital marketing, and that's gonna be all over your service area. Um, and hopefully we're drawing in some kind of geo fence or geo area based on service area around postal codes, towns, or cities. I won't get into the Facebook um, ad setup how you actually do that, but basically we wanna draw an imaginary line around your service area and, and segment um, and target that area. So we're gonna cast that digital net across your whole service area. Once we get them in, we wanna use offline marketing to zero in to the particular new clients and existing clients we have and build route density. And one of the ways of doing that is creating a, uh, a process called nine around. So they're basically a series of, in my opinion, three to five postcards to all the adjoining neighbors. So in the automated pipeline that I showed you, when a client became a new client, the automation would automatically trigger out to a product like Send Gym, and we would automate those postcards. Originally, we would have um, the crews or separate employees go out and basically flyer the nine to 12 houses around each existing client and each new client several times a year. Uh, but basically what happened is we got a call from the town and some of our not um, stand-up employees at that point took all the flyers and dumped them in the city sewer and they backed up. So I had a call that we had several thousand flyers sitting in one of the sewer drains. And obviously that was a aha moment for me that we probably should automate this process. So what we did is every time we get a new client, the automation triggers a uh, message uh, that triggers the automation inside a product like Send Gym, and we send out three to five rounds of postcards to all the adjoining neighbors to build route density. So the overall idea is um, at first, we want to, outside of the automations, cast a, a digital net around our service area, and we're gonna go in with organic educational content, uh, take those cold leads to warm leads, start targeting with a little more education, and then finally take those warm leads to hot leads and go in and try to close them with um, some retargeting ads over Facebook or Instagram or uh, LinkedIn to basically sell those services. And then once we get those new clients, the automation kicks in and we automate the postcards or the nine arounds around each existing new clients home to build route density in each neighborhood we are in so we can go out and dominate and eliminate drive time. So this is just a quick example of what that kind of looks like to utilize um, a process inside your CRM and then how to use digital marketing to cast that broad net out across your service area. So as we go through here with the mouse, um, in automations, we usually use a thing called a tag and the tags allowed us to segment um, each part. So those imaginary buckets are segmented by a tag. So if it has this tag on it, um, it's one thing if it has, say, residential tag, it's a residential client. If it's a commercial tag, it could be a commercial cleaning company. So that's our client. So those are the ways we can use some of the features of an automated system to segment. Um, tags are one of them. So as we go in here, uh, we've got a, a service that's segmented by the tag and we're going in. So let's say it's a top to bottom clean tag. So we're going to go in and put an upsell email to get that reoccurring weekly or biweekly clean. Uh, if it is open, we're going to send them across the top progression here. And the up, op, the upsell email is open. So that's the desired progression across the top. But let's say this upsell email is here and it's not open. The automation usually is smart enough to realize based on email link goals or actually open goals if the email is open. So if not, we can set a timer and go in for temp number one. And if that's open, we'd run the top progression. The goal was met to the upsell. If it, the second attempt here is not open, we have a timer. And basically, let's say another day, we have a second attempt uh, email. Once again, if they open it, we can send them to the desired 
uh, email, maybe landing page, the sign up request and estimate. So let's just say the original attempt is not open. Uh, attempt number one to get them open again. And then attempt number two after another day is not open. We wait another day. And what we can do is have the automation assign a task or to do to an individual in the office to physically call the person to get them to do the upsell. Or this could be a ringless voicemail bomb. If there is no response across the bottom progression here, uh, we could tag that and segment that, that, hey, we've had a multiple contact point, no response. Let's throw them into a long-term educational nurture over the next three months. And that's going to be an email campaign or maybe a combination of email, postcards, and phone cards, whatever that looks like. And then after that three-month timer, we're going to sign to do our task for somebody in the office or a ringless voicemail bomb to actually physically make a call to get them to buy into that reoccurring service. At the end of that here, uh, as we're going in, in addition to going through the email string and the phone, uh, we're gonna drop across the bottom progression here. And we may have another tag that segments them for a Facebook custom audience. So that would be their, their name, their address, their email, all the information we have, we could export that out of our CRM and then upload that in to Facebook and use that list. So if they signed up to Facebook with that same email address, we can go out and retarget them with specific ads um, that are paid to educate them and basically convert them into cold or warm leads, into hot leads, and then driving them here to a landing page with an offer to basically get that reoccurring weekly or biweekly sale. Um, and then we're gonna go segment and remarket and fulfill that new sale. So digital marketing, uh, can be done whether it's a, through a pixel or uploading a custom audience or building out certain demographics in Facebook. But the most important thing here is through an automated process, we can segment, export a list, and drive it into Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn to retarget. So now that we've cast that digital net, we're going to go to our offline marketing to build route density. So with this here, you can see there's a bunch of... Uh, red pins here. So these could be our existing clients. All the blue pins are different areas around those pins that we could drop the original geo pin on the red pin and using a product uh, like Send Gym, a radius bomb, we can go out and create an automated process to capture all the adjoining addresses in that neighborhood and go out and retarget them and say, hey, someone in your neighborhood has just signed up for uh, cleaning. Would you be interested in a special for the top to bottom and then reoccurring moving forward? So we're going to use that digital net through a custom audience uploaded into Facebook to cast across our entire service area or a geofence around it. And then we're gonna go into offline marketing through an automated process to send a series of three to five postcards to the adjoining neighbors. Um, the marketing copy should vary on those in my opinion, but that's a great way to use an automated process um, to build marketing with offline um, density. So the next thing here is basically we want to downsell. So once we get those people um, from those nine arounds, we want to downsell the, sell, the service. So we just want to sell the core service over the phone. So um, basically we want to go in and get the home square footage and the size of bedrooms, whatever you're doing, and create a pre-built template that's going to load in for maybe a price range, a high and low price range for that deep clean or an hourly rate. And we're going to sell that one time top to bottom or deep clean. And then once we've sell that, uh, we're going to upsell the weekly or bi-weekly or monthly cleaning for the reoccurring service. So we're going to try to make the sales process as simple as possible. When we go to build that route density, let's sell them over the phone to one core service and then upsell them to the reoccurring higher lifetime value service. Follow-ups and upsells. So we're going to automate the follow-up system. So maybe we're going out to their property. Um, and this is more of a commercial um aspect here, but this can be done in, in residential cleaning as well. But basically inspections after say 30 days of a commercial cleaning, we go out and inspect all the different areas that potentially could be upsold. So maybe it's stripping and waxing. Maybe it's getting the ducts clean. Maybe it's carpet cleaning. Some of those things we may do in-house, we may subcontract out, but we're going to go out and sell and kind of be that full service provider. Um, so maybe in the residential cleaning, this could be uh, an insight inspection two to three days or right after uh, the deep clean was done with the crews. 
So obviously this is gonna vary depending on a residential or cleaning. Um, once we're there, we're gonna inspect and collect all the custom fields. So maybe the number of fridges, number of stoves, maybe the different areas of square footage of carpet, if that's something you do. Uh, maybe if you're subcontracting out the windows, or do it internally. We're gonna we're gonna take all the all the data points for the window cleaning as well. Um, so now we have it all in a custom field in our database associated to the client. And anytime we need to go out and do an upsell series, all the information's in the system. We can automatically trigger that upsell through the automation without physically having to go out to the property to estimate it again. So basically, in the business now at this point, we've grown the business so fast. The, the wheels have literally fallen off, and at least in my business, uh, we were growing so fast that we couldn't find enough employees to literally staff the business. So what we did here is we created basically a sales pipeline, inverted it on its side. And this sales pipeline literally was a recruiting, training, and onboarding process for employees. So we figured the automations work so well for our external customers, why not do it for our internal customers, which were our employees? So what we did here at the top is we built out a hosted landing page. So this went on our Craigslist, Indeed, Facebook, wherever we're looking online for employees. Next part is we went in and built out an office entry form. So if they came to the office, we had a form they could fill out, whether it was on a tablet or um, in a computer in the office. Once we got that part through, we entered in the automated system. We ran them through uh, a two-part application process. So we made them jump through some general hoops to make sure they were qualified and could answer some certain questions. One of the biggest problems in New York where we're located is unemployment uh, would continue to go if you lined up job interviews. So a lot of people were signing up for job interviews, not showing, and it was a huge time suck. So this automated process screened out a lot of those unemployment people and allowed us to just get the applicants that we were interested in. So let's just say Julie gets through this process. Uh, a to-do now pops up in the office for someone in the office to give a pre-interview ranking and review the applicant. So either in an A, B, and C uh, fashion, in the automation, they'd enter that into our employee master form. So whether, um, let's just say in my instance, I only wanted to interview A and B prospects. So the, the admin would screen that out. And then if they were in A and B, uh, Christine in my office would call uh, Julie and say, set up the date and time of the interview. Now, once that was set up, the automation would automatically, either email or text message, I recommend text message at this point, uh, the week before and the day before the interview. We can also include some homework. What we did is if this individual needed to have a driver's license to run that crew, uh, we sent them out to the DMV to get a driver's abstract. So they had some homework with a deadline and they had some skin in the game. So we knew that they could follow simple directions and get them done by a deadline by the time they got to the interview. Once we get to the interview here, we had a standardized interviewing package. These were five or six standardized questions that we would ask each and every applicant. So we had a standard non-biased way of interviewing. What I'm gonna recommend, and the way we did it, is we interviewed two to three times a week. Uh, there were certain points in the season that we knew around certain holidays that we traditionally, in the last four to five years, either someone would quit or they would get fired. And those were traditionally around Memorial Day, 4th of July, middle of August, and around the end of October, Thanksgiving area. Um, so we knew around those areas, about a week and a half to two weeks before that happened, we'd ramp up and interview every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, but basically what would happen here is the person interviewing was myself or the gentleman running the business at this point would ask a series of standardized five questions and then some additional qualifying questions. Um, and they would rank the individual uh, interviewer ranking of A, B, and C with interviewer's comments. And now what we did is we have a save view in CRM or automation where I can go in or the business manager could go in or the office could go in and say, I want all my A applicants from the last 10 days. And it gives you a glorifying hiring checklist. So what we're doing is creating basically a hiring labor pool. And what we did that got us into the biggest problem uh, as we were scaling, we grew so fast that we just needed bodies that we started hiring the first person through the door of the pulse. Now, obviously, you know how that worked out. That was not so good. So we needed to create a standardized process so we had a qualified labor pool. So if we had a two-person uh, cleaning crew in this instance and maybe one person didn't show up, the one person had to go clean solo for the, the that week or that day, uh, traditionally, um, that's when business owners gets blackmailed by the employee and saying, well, I'm not going out and doing this work by myself unless I get a $2 an hour raise. So that individual may have lasted to Friday in my business, but 
they didn't last a Monday. I went into the automation, searched in who are my all my A or B applicants in the last 15 to 20 days. In my office would go through and start working that hiring checklist. So it puts the business owner back in control. So whether we had a huge spike of sales or uh, we have some employees that we have basically coached up and uh, had to eventually coach out, that's going to put you back into control and give you that power. Once the prospect was hired, uh, we drop them into a two to three part introduction to company culture. So uh, predominantly we were having a lot, a, a real hard time retaining employees in the lawn care company uh, for the whole entire year. We'd get them through a summer season, but we couldn't get them to come back or continue 12 months of continual work with our winter work. So what happened is at this point I was an absentee owner. So I finally went out and uh, talked to a few of these gentlemen and ladies and said, Hey, what's going on here? Why aren't you sticking around? Is it the company? Is it the gentleman running the business? Is it the pay? Um, and they would say, you know, the business is great. Uh, love the company. The guy who running the business is okay. Um, it pays really great, but all it is is pay. Um, so what we did is we went out uh, to a company out in Arizona and did some culture trainings over mission and vision and values. And we built that. Um, and then we we realized that we really needed to automate that onboarding indoctrination process because when things got really busy, they didn't happen. Or when we had a new hire, it included and needed the business owner manager to do it. And a lot of times we weren't available the first day they started. So um, I didn't want to be a slave to the business. So I realized conceptually for this to happen the way it should, we had to automate the process. So what we did is we automated our mission, vision, and values. And believe it or not, instead of getting seven to eight months out of most employees um, in the seasonal business that we were in, we were getting three to five years out of them because we were talking about our community service and the different things we did and we stood for. And they built in, they bought into that culture and not just the paycheck. So we had a, a cultural alignment. Next thing we did is did an automated tax document collection. So obviously when people come in, uh, the business owner and manager had to be there once again to onboard them and take, and take all that uh, information. So we basically automated that whole entire process. So our culture indoctrination and our tax document doc, uh, collection went up to three times after the third and final attempt and deadline. Let's say Julie didn't fill out her tax docs. Uh, a to-do or a task would show up in the office and say, hey, Julie never filled out her tax docs. At this point, we re ended up firing Julie. So the process that we built out here is in the beginning, before the interview, we created an automated process to screen out the people to buy time back. Once we hired them, before we trained them, we onboarded them and created another screening process to make sure they could follow deadlines and simple instructions. And if Julie couldn't get her tax documents to get in the paid, I'm highly doubting she's going to follow the process and procedure in your business for a weekly or biweekly clean. So now that we've got them in, the final step here in the green is we realized that the training um, eventually I couldn't do all of it. So I trained the business manager, or as I called him, the operations coach, because it was more of a coaching process and management, in our opinion. Um, but basically, as that gentleman started to train all these crews and individuals, the process and systems we had built our estimating on and quality control on started to look more like the, the operations coach or the business manager, or the uh, operations manager than the process and system that we had in Callahan. So what we did is uh, literally bought about a 50 to $60 tripod, a wireless mic that was about a hundred bucks and actually just used a smartphone. And what we did is made low production videos of every process and system we did in the business in the field. And then we created about six separate modules that had six or seven videos in each module with tests on them. And we drove each and every new individual through how to do each process and system in the business. Um, so by the time we got them in the field, they had already known our process and system, what was expected, uh, what to do, what not to do. And that cut two to three days out of our actual training process as far as learning curve. Uh, we paid all the individuals on these crews on a piece rate pay system. So they got paid for the budgeted time, not the actual time. Now, obviously in training, we paid the trainer a little bit more and the trainer uh, got paid straight time uh, for those training days because they couldn't be held to the budgeted time. But if they beat the budgeted time, we paid them uh, for the budgeted time 
not the straight time. So if they're budgeted for 10 hours and they got it done in eight with the quality constraint, they got paid for those 10 hours. So what we realized is the trainers actually started reinforcing our video training on the iPads or the iPhones in the crews going out each morning the first week. Um, so the individuals had already watched these videos in the office and been tested and then the crew leaders uh, asked to get that video information back to reinforce it during the first week and we found it cut two to three days off our learning curve to actually get back to our budgeted time. So that was where I was sold on the videos and it basically created a turnkey revolutionary um, almost franchise about franchise fees. So that worked so well in the field that we actually went in to the office and did screenshot videos of the software that we're using for our CRM and automations and created an additional six modules uh, with about 36 to 37 videos that every time we hired a new admin, literally off the street, within five to seven days, that individual would know exactly how to run the system. And we standardized our training to probably five or six screens um, inside the software program. And we called those the five or six screens to success. And we standardized the workflow literally from lead acquisition all the way to invoicing and fulfillment, just like we did with the master sales form and the master employee form. So we standardized it and created a reproductible system that can be easily trained through video without the business owner having to be there. The following thing is we did is employee uh, contract and process. So if we had an employment contract or down below uh, the video here, we had employee handbooks. Our, our employment contract and handbook were automatically filled and tracked. Uh, to make sure what should happen happened each and every time without the business owner or manager having to be physically there to babysit that process. So uh, as we're going in as a quick overview, we're making sure that our bit of business model process and systems are working right. We're going in and creating a successful automation. We've got our sales pipeline um, literally from lead acquisition. So if they hit the website and they're not requesting an estimate, we've got that lead magnet to grab that information to go out and do some of that digital marketing with them and retarget them. Uh, then we drive them through an automated sales pipeline. Now we've hopefully we've covered the different trash cans or holes in your, your pipeline through a segmented, uh, personalized uh, process that's allowing us to have personal conversations based on the service and where they're at in the life cycle marketing. Once We've created the sales machine. Now we need to create a staff that can fill the work and it doesn't involve the business owner uh, managing this process. So we've created this process of going out online or through the office, driving this through an online application process, uh, pre-interview and post-interview ranking. We're creating a qualified data, uh, labor pool that we can search and bring on new applicants. So we're not hiring the first person through the door or the pulse. We're proactively looking for someone. So when we, need someone in our business it's too late so we need to go out and look for them before we need them so we have that that basically virtual bench very similar to a sports team i like to use the analogy is uh we've got people on the virtual bench so if the girls and guys in the field aren't producing or we need more people on the field uh, we have them on the bench we're going to indoctrinate to a company culture mission vision values automated tax document collection they're going to run the office and the field through an automated video training series we're going to create a turnkey solution so if you ever fall ill and can't run your own business or you want to hand it off in my instance and basically become an absentee owner we hand this off and let the new business owner run that and if you want to go to sell your business um, you have a marketable piece of uh, a business that can basically show the new prospective owner that this business is a turnkey solution that does not revolve around the existing owner or manager and then we've got employment contract and handbook tracking fulfillment uh, as this lays out, the way this would look is basically across the top here, uh, we have a new hire. We're going to have a series of emails going in for our mission, vision, and culture training. Um, then we're going to go in and get that tax document collection. We're going to have video landing pages, a series of five to six for the field, and a series of five or six for the office. We're going to drive them through with testing to make sure that they are ready to go by the time we actually get them, um, their feet on the ground and ready to go. And then the final part is we're gonna have an employment contract and handbook fulfillment, especially when things are crazy. A lot of times business owners forget to get this done in a timely manner and that can come back to bite them later with um, labor issues. So we're gonna create an automated system with reminders if that's not done and hold one person accountable uh, or a role in the business uh, accountable for that. So this is kind of how this works out. Um, and as I said before, we had three attempts after the final attempt, 
if those culture training or tax documents are not done, it's going to tell, tell somebody in the office that, hey, Julie didn't do this, and the process normally would be to let Julie go. So hopefully that visually makes sense as we, we go in through that onboarding process. So as you're looking at this, the way this would look in automations to create those five to six screens of success is that master employee form. So we've got our interview date, interview time up top. We've got our outcome of the interview. Are we starting the onboarding process? We're gonna track their hourly pay. Have they started and finished the video training? Uh, are they fully onboarded? Uh, new hire backed out or they quit? So the other thing that I didn't mention earlier in this program is we're building out automations. We really need to create a blueprint. So whether it's a big sticky note on the wall or a visual diagram, we wanna draw out the perfect path of um, a prospect coming in. So just like we said, they filled out the online application, uh, we ranked them, they went to the DMV, got the driver's ad track, we interviewed them, we onboarded them, we trained them. Uh, but what that automation, at least on face value, is not showing you is where are all the areas that things can happen? So it's not if it's gonna happen, it's when it's gonna happen. So what happens if someone doesn't show up to the interview? What happens if somebody goes in and they quit after some of the training? What if they get fired after some of the training? We need to have different areas in the automation to account for the good, perfect path and each possible way, um, bad thing that could happen along the way. So if you're building automations yourself or you're looking at a professional service, you wanna make sure that they've accounted for the perfect path and all the other things along the way that can happen to be able to account for those and bucket those things. Um, we created a self eject button. So if something crazy happened and we just wanted to get them out of the automation and shut it off, we put that in as a safe, a safeguard. Uh, we've got tax document collection, employment handbook fulfillment. And you can kind of see uh, a blown up version of this. But so I wanted to give you an idea of how you can actually build this out for yourself. Um, or if you're going to hire a professional, these are the things, in my opinion, you need to be looking for um, that need to be accounted for in a fully automated cleaning business. So as we dive into this, um, the next thing is our internal slash HR. So we built this sales machine. We've created this employee system. Um, now the business owner, usually the next hurdle to growth is to get out of the firefighting um, mode. So they're constantly fighting fires, they're babysitting everybody, and they need to tell everybody what to do, when to do it, how to do it. So as we go in, uh, in my business, that was the biggest issue. So how do I pull myself out of this day-to-day -day chaos and let everyone in the business know what they should do, how they should do it, and when they should do it? So as we looked at it, we realized there was daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly things. We, we dubbed these as re repetitive tasks. These are the internal slash HR things that we talked about in the beginning of the talk. So as we looked at it, um, we took what was in the business owner's head up here. Um, they're making all these decisions and they, what we needed to do is disseminate that knowledge and delegation. And so we decided we could delegate and automate. And what we looked at is there's seven core areas of the business across the top here uh, in the blue that can be automated across the CRM. Uh, they're gonna be sales, customer service, scheduling, billing, office manager, maintenance and owner. Uh, so as we got into it, there were certain things that salespeople needed to be told to do or had to do on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually basis. Customer service, scheduling, billing, office managers, even maintenance on the cleaning industry. We're going in and replacing filters on vacuums. We're doing other things that need to be maintained as far as equipment. These are all the things that somebody needed to tell someone on the team to do. So what we did is we took the information in the business owner's head and we leverage the power of the software to go out and assign it through to do or task. So let's just say we had a full-time salesperson for this example. Let's say the salesperson's name is Dave. Uh, if Dave's job was to go out and finish all his sales calls for the day or estimates, uh, track his daily uh, versus budgeted sales closing ratio, and maybe do one other thing. Those were his three tasks for the day. The way the automation is set is it would actually send Dave his, his checklist of what needs to be due with details. Uh, a lot of times if it was thing far as maintenance or if it was applicable, we'd apply videos in there as well. Um, but the whole idea is if that was done, due by the end of the day and Dave didn't do his job at about five or 5.15 p.m. at the end of the business day, the automation with your text message or email Dave the salesperson let him know that he didn't do his job of the day, and then it would escalate to the business manager or owner via text or email, depending on the importance of it, 
and let them know that Dave didn't do his task for the day and spell out exactly what it was. So now the business manager uh, or owner can be pulled out of the day-to-day -day chaos and now the leverage the power of the software and the automations to manage these workflows. And if something doesn't happen, then you can jump back in and raise that red flag so you know that something didn't happen. Uh, but, but this is exactly what took my um, chaos of 100 hours a week and drove it down to literally three to five hours a week and then an absentee owner. So we, we tackled our sales, we tackled our employee, and then we tackled our repetitive task. And this allows you to uh, either become that absentee owner in this process or be that Michael Gerber working on it and working in it. So I, I really wanted to just dial out, hopefully this is helpful, what a fully automated cleaning company can look like. Um, best practices and automations as we close up here, really recommend creating a standard aid uh, tag naming convention. So it may be 10 dot marketing, 20 dot sales, 30 dot fulfillment, um, and so on. But the naming convention of 10, 20, and 30 will be easily sorted no matter the CRM. And you can go in and say, I want all my sales tags or all my sales automations, all my internal HR and, um, automations or processes or tags, those could be 50 dot. So those are important. Create a standardized naming convention and create a naming convention for your automations as well. So we do it 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 uh, for the type of automations. And then the type of tag uh, is a one, two, three, four, five tag. Um, so we have tags have a, a single digit, the automations have a two-digit naming convention. You can use whatever you want, but that's how we tackled it. Uh, next thing is SPAM, uh, Camp Spam Act. It's applicable in the U.S. and Canada, particularly in Canada. Uh, you need a double opt-in. So if somebody requests information, you need to send a confirmation email where they opt into it. Um, that's up to about a $10,000 fine in Canada. The U.S. is right behind uh, in the Camp Spam Act uh, law in the U.S., uh, all business to consumer, all business to consumer interactions, you need to have an opt out link in the bottom. And if people don't want to hear from you, let them opt out. That's not a bad thing. It's keeping data hygiene and list hygiene and your marketing to just the people that want to hear from you. And you're going to have better open rates and better deliverability rates. So these are the things you want to keep in mind as you're building an automated system. Um, and now if we have any questions, we'll open it up. And I know we're running short on time here, so if actually you want to drop an email um, to the summit, I'm happy to respond to those personally as well or on the Facebook group. But in closing, want to thank you for your time. And I really didn't get into the beginning of it, but my passion around automations and the reason why we built this and we're helping people is basically I had built a business um, probably seven to eight years ago before we got into automations that revolved around me. Uh, if I had left for a day, a week, the business would have fell apart. Um, that ended up causing a divorce um, with a high school sweetheart. And that uh, obviously was a bit of a rock bottom situation. But what I did is I searched the internet for a solution to basically take my life back to from my business. I found an automated platform and we built out automations to solve each and every little pain point in the business. And then um, we've literally just shown you how we've done that. So if you're going out to build your own automations, uh, no matter the platform, you want to start with your biggest pain points. You want to blueprint them out. We don't want to um, try to implement and build the automations right in the canvas or wherever you're building them. We want to blueprint them out. Uh, make sure you have all the emails, the tags, the landing pages, and anything else that's going in there lined out and built out. And then when you go into your automation platform, uh, you simply replicate what's on paper in the automation and you have an executable blueprint. Uh, I use the analogy of building a house. You're not going to build a house without a blueprint, put random windows and doors everywhere. Same exact thing with your automations as you're building them out. Start little, but blueprint them, get all your assets that you need to build them beforehand, and then go and build the automation and test, test, test before you put them to the general public. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. And like I said, if you submit any of your questions, um, to the summit or on that ZenMade uh, Facebook page, I'm happy to uh, answer them publicly or privately as well. So thanks again. I want to uh, thank Amara and ZenMade, and uh, hopefully that was helpful.